Hello there YouTube. This will be the beginning of my long wire antenna. This is satellite, TV cable, coaxial cable, 75 ohm. The ohms does not matter because all we're going to do is use the center of this for our long wire antenna and this will shield the signal that comes from the antenna down through the shack, through the building, etc. So your wire is going to be live and it will be shielded. Because you don't, you just don't want to run a piece of wire and run it down. You know what I mean? I'm sure you know what I mean there. But the stuff's kind of tricky to get off. I I unweave my braid with a little pointy tool and get it all. It's about two inches. Just peck at this stuff. This foil, because you want this foil all gone. So I'm kind of pecking at this foil, my little utility knife. Just keep pecking, take your time. It's worth it. You don't want any foil on this foam. You know what? No ground near the hot side. Get back on camera. So we'll do that and then we'll be back. This will take a while, but it's worth it. Because it is glued on there. It's worth it to get that off there. Get it all of it off there. Start out with two inches. You could start out with three inches in case you mess up or something. But we'll be back and we'll show you what it looks like when that crap's all cleaned off. Okay, we're back. We're showing another way of how we get this off here. Back and forth, scrape it. Just try to save as much of the center foam as you can because it is an insulator. Get that crap off there. This has been a grungy mess. This piece of cable was run down my big garage to my satellite dish and they replaced it with a double type system on the dish. And this gave me about 50 feet of free stuff, so that was a plus. I don't have to hunt for any. Here, get back on camera. See what I mean? You don't want any of that left on there. If you rough up this, it don't matter. This is not a transmitting antenna, so we don't have to be picky. We just want to make sure it's insulated. Of course, you, be, you want to check everything with ohm meter when you're done, too. You want to make sure you'll have no contact with this ground to this when you're done building it. But I thought I'd add this. It takes a little bit of work because that's glued on there, but it's worth it. Okay. Then what we're going to do, we're just going to go about, because we want to stay away from there. We're going to go about here. And I just press in. This is a real sharp new blade on this. I press in until I feel it. See how easy that was? I just press until I feel it. Now, if you was transmitting, I would not be pressing in here and gouging into your copper. I would be just a little more careful using the strippers or something. I'd be a little more careful, but I don't think I even put a nick in it. This is pretty good center on this stuff. It's pretty good. You can see it doesn't bend real easy. It's pretty stiff. Brand doesn't matter. It's whatever the satellite company uses. RG6 is what they call this, 25 ohm. Or is that a 4? I'm used to the old stuff. The old stuff is RG6. Yeah, I think it's a 6. I think that's 3 gigahertz. So, it's way better than what we need for what we're using for, but I'm not going to pass up because I like the double shielding on it for one thing. This is why I use my long wire. I like the double shielding because you're going to be receiving on your wire outside. You'll see as this progresses. You want to shield this signal, radio signal, inside of here as it comes down to your building to your radio. And another tip, and I'll mention it later on, do not ground this to any ground stake. Do not ground this to anything. Not being a know-it-all, but I was taught how to do this by the old ham operators and people who've done this. This does not need to be grounded. Do not ground it. You will be grounding your receiving radio to a separate grounding stake. All this acts as a shield to shield the signal. If you ground this, you'll know it. You can go ahead and ground it once and you'll know what I mean. You'll find like a weak station. You'll, it'll start killing the station out. That's what it always did to me. I've experimented too just to see if they knew what they were talking about. <laughs> but don't ground this. This is a shield. Just like when you hook this back to your radio, you'll be building the other end the same way as this. You'll be putting tape around here so you never touch the ground. Here's our end. Okay, now I'll be back and I'll show you how we're going to connect this to the piece of wire that will be coming off here going across the yard. 
Okay, this time I'm going to build mine. You can build about any way you want. Here's going to be my feed line. This is an eye hook, eye bolt, I should say. I didn't have the threaded kind, so I just grabbed what size and I jammed, put this device and jammed a number 10 nut over it. And it'd take a lot to pull out of there. I think the plastic would break first. This is going to be hanging on to my tower end string wire whatever to hold this and then the feed line will be going so the feed line can curve down okay pill bottle and I'm using the twist lock end I'm not going to use the thread part I'm going to put some epoxy on here too because there's going to be some weight on this I'm trying to keep the this strong so we're not pulling these two wires apart so this is going to be holding all the weight of it because the wire is going to get a little heavy there. But I will put some glue epoxy when I finally put this together. I will be squirting it down there because there is holes in here too. See them little slots? Those are holes. That's not airtight. Either way you put it, it's not airtight. We use the twist lock part. Okay, this wire. See, I got a knot in there. There is a formula on wires when you twist the ends of wires and all that stuff, how it changes it electrically, but we're just, just a cheapy listing antenna. What this wire is, is an old double wired telephone wire that was thrown across poles and buried and whatever. This stuff is tough. It takes a lot of muscle to pull this stuff apart. If you pull apart speaker wire, it's going to be easier. I'm putting a lot of force in there. I'll be have this hooked to the bump of my truck with the vice grips and I'll be yanking on it. It's going to get spiraled. I don't care after a while to go straight. This is copper coated steel. It may be copper on the outside, but it's magnetic. It's steel. So when I scrape this, I'm going to be real careful. Most of this gunk on here is not corrosion because I already cut about six inches back. It's just the black rubber plastic where it was melted and made. But if you come across this, don't scrape a lot of it because the copper is the only thing you're going to solder to. You're not going to really solder to the metal. And how we're going to do this is we're going to have these wires wrap this way. Not cross them and do this. That's even braided wire. I will shove braided wire together end to end and braid and stick to braid and solder it with solder. I don't like this idea. Things break, things twist, that's too tight. It'll be wrapped in a spiral. This is softer than the steel, so the copper will be wrapped around this copper coated steel. Then I'll solder it with my big gun, not iron, the actual big soldering gun, 140 watts, or whatever. Oh, ham radio kind of clicked in the background. Will this be inside? I'll have this measured out. Solder it with it pulled apart, of course. You'll have this shoved in there. And I've got this hole pretty tight. And this is all going to be glued up with sealer. So this will be pulled out where it's supposed to be. So when it all goes together and twists together, it's going to be inside of there. This is the prevent it from corroding. Because I've just slapped these together. They get corroded, especially with this type of wire. I'm trying to get this so it's insulated the best it can be. So it's going to last me through the winter, until next summer, whenever. But put a bunch of tape here so it can't pull through here with just your feed line. Eye bolt works good. You'll have your twist lock, like I said, and I will glue that. You done twist lock that, you could wrap a bunch of tape around it. I'm going to pour a bunch of glue down in it or something. Probably on here before I put together some sealer. I want all the more advantage when I glue it together. Then I might put some tape around it too. But I will be gluing these holes shut. If it takes glue stick anything melting. I do have a video of using glue stick where I melt it with my lighter and a little tool so you get the idea. This be pretty strong. This wire is going to weigh a lot. It'll be 50 feet of this wire strong across yard. There's going to be some weight to it but everybody can find a pill bottle and everybody can find an eye hook. And everybody can find a piece of old TV cable coax because we don't care about the ohms. So the wire is up to you, whatever you find. You can get the uh, 12 gauge or whatever speaker wire and split it apart. The longer you can go across the yard, the better. I'd like to go 75 to 100 feet, but the way I'm building mine is only going to be 50 feet. That'll be plenty good enough for me to listen to shortwave signals. So, we'll pause here again. We'll put this together and we'll show you what it looks like when it's together because you'll be able to see through the plastic. 
Okay, nothing special. You can see it in there how I wrapped up. Nothing special, nothing special soldering it. I'm not even going to put any tape in there because you could always climb up there and look at it and see if it's corroded in there. You'll be able to see if there's any moisture in here. You could collect moisture no matter how much you try to seal this up. You could be trapping moisture in there when you seal it up and it stays in there. But it's never going to be completely airtight. So you your force is going to be on here, and the force is going to be on the wire on here. So if it breaks, it's going to break where this is at first. I don't think that's going to break when I'm done gluing it. Yeah, I think it will hold the weight. We will find out. The test of time. If it ever breaks, I'll show the failure of it. So, if you never see another video of it failed, well, you know how long it lasts. I'm sure it'll last. I will be gluing this together where it twist locks. Nothing special, I soldered the wire. I did kind of put like a hook to it, had it bent around there once, you know, kind of bent over itself, spiraled and bent over. It's nothing, has to be up to any codes or nothing, you're just listing on a piece of wire. You're just keeping it from getting corroded in there. You got to, you're finding a way to make a connection to the wire antenna, to a coaxial cable, and have it hooked to your tower. Now the other end, I haven't figured out how to do it yet. I thought of several ways. The other end doesn't have to be as special as this. It just has to have an insulator between this wire and hooked to my other pole, so it has to have some kind of insulator. I may just use a hunk of plastic with holes drilled in it. They do make insulators. You can go to your Radio Shack anywhere. You, you can get the little insulators, but that's money. I'd rather make stuff out of scrap stuff. Don't cost me a dime. So far, this has cost me nothing. This wire was free. This is free. It cost me what? Whatever the box of assorted hooks, whatever this hook and that's going to cost me, and a little bit of solder. The cable was free. But you always pay for stuff in the end. I mean, we're a subscriber to the satellite, so we paid to have it installed, but they redid it. They put the double line stuff. Don't know why, whatever their code is, but there it is inside the bottle. We're going to leave it bare. Because that way it's going to be kind of an experiment to see how good it looks after the winter's over and everything. So stay tuned for the next part.